Today I want to show you this method which allows you to set objects which are further away from the camera to have a smaller print width and things which are closer to the camera to have a thicker print width so you get this perception of things receding into the distance. In this drawing there are like three or four different things going on. The first thing is these long extrusions in the middle and you can see how they start thick and end up thin furthest away from the camera. The breps on the side um, closed poly surface, open poly surface and curves. They start with the thickest lines and anything that's furthest away from the plane of the camera becomes thinner. So to achieve this effect, the principle is that anything that's closest to the plane of the camera will have a higher line thickness and anything that's furthest from the camera will have the lowest line thickness. Here I am in Grasshopper and Rhino and this is what those uh, breps look like in the rendered view. If I switch this over to wireframe, um, this is what it looks like with the objects on the left being curves. This script here is dealing with all of the objects around the perimeter and this script at the top is dealing with this in, these internal long extrusions and they're a special case. So I've taken all of this input geometry, all of the stuff around the perimeter, dumped it into this geometry container. And then I've got this sort object by type component, which is um, a human component, and it splits up all of the geometry into its various categories, breps, points, curves, etc. I'm taking the curves, I'm measuring the curve edit points, and most of these are line-like curves, so they're just single start and end points. Line-like curve, there's some polylines in there as well, so they're joined. And I'm taking the first uh, point of those um, curves, and I'm getting the distance between that first point, so that's the point here, all of these points, and the projected point. So I'm taking those same points and projecting them onto a plane that's created by the camera. And you can see those points here. Those two points make a distance, and I'm taking the square root of that distance because I want a non-linear result. Um, a non-linear result will mean that what appears at the start or the closest to the camera is the thickest and then it quickly falls away and then gradually falls away less and less quickly like this graph mapper over here. So I've got it happening twice. The square root of that result has then been remapped to between 0 0.004 and 0 0.9 millimeters. So these are the millimeters plot width that I want to assign for each of these curves. And on top of that, I'm adding another a graph mapper just because I want it to fall off quite steeply. So if I show you what this graph mapper does, um, it has Bezier handles. And the Bezier handles, you can see that the upper bounds are being affected more than the lower bounds when I affect that handle only. So that's why um, I wanted this steep fall off where um, because the, the, the lines in the middle were looking too thick. So then I plug that into a create attributes um, component, another human component, and that attribute has been assigned to the original line geometry. I bake that out, and that's what I have here. All of this, each of these curves with its individual print width. For this part of the script, using the interior geometry, so these long extrusions, um, I wanted to create that receding effect, but it's not easy to do, and it's often will not work. But with simple geometries like an extrusion or a sphere or anything which doesn't like um, have like a curved pipe or um, it, it should work. I'll take the input geometry and the input geometry is these uh, green poly surface. I plug them into that component, it outputs the breps. I'm taking the edges of those breps. So that's what I want to see is the edges of these extrusions. I'm dividing those, um, those edges uh, by distance. That's the component. And that gives me parameters and all of the points for each of those lines is being grouped. Then I'm putting them into a shatter component. So this shatter component takes that original edge and then it shatters each one of those edges into pieces, one meter long pieces. That's how long the distance is. Take those segments, take the midpoint of those segments. It's the same deal. I'm getting the, the distance between the midpoint. So we'll take, we'll have a look at the midpoint. 
and you can see the midpoints in green of all of those shattered curves. I'm taking the midpoint of all of those shattered curve segments and putting them into point A. I'm taking that same point and then I'm uh, projecting it again to the, the plane of the camera. So then we get the distance. I am then taking the square root of each of these distances. I'm remapping those numbers to between, in this case it's yes, 0.004 millimeters and 0.8 millimeters as a, as a print thickness. I've added this um, graph mapper at the end to customize that. I've plugged that into the plot weight and then I am baking out that geometry with that attribute of that plot weight. To make it look like this, where I've hidden the, the edges that are hidden, <laughs> I am taking that original breadth and then I'm scaling it by 0 0.9951. So it's pretty much the original size and it's being scaled around its, its volume centroid. I'm baking that out and then I use that. It's just slightly smaller. And the reason for that is then it's not overlapping any of the, the shattered curve segments. And so when you do your make 2D, you have the curves which are just a little bit out from that reduced extrusion. And when you print it out, you get all of those edges visible and the close edges are the thickest and the farthest edges are the thinnest. If you look really closely, you can see how it's sort of changing in thickness, but you know, it still looks better. It still looks pretty good. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe and consider sharing it with your friends. Cheers.